Hey guys, welcome back. Um, so this is the second video in our UE5 game tutorial series. Uh, in this one, what we're going to do is we're going to do some basics with the voxel plugin and set up some inputs so that we can control the character and uh, basically test some of the basic features of uh, the voxel plugin, at least the parts of it that we're planning to use in this game. So what I want to do is go down to our content drawer here. And if you go to voxel content and you go to examples and then maps, there's some different example worlds that you can go to that utilize different parts of the voxel plugin. For what we're doing, we're going to go into the cubic destruction folder and open the cubic destruction world. Once we're here, you're going to see that we have uh, this world, and which is pretty flat, and this building. Now, if we go ahead and we hit play, Actually, before we do that, let's um, change the play mode to a new editor window. If we get into the game and we try and move around, I'm pressing buttons and moving my mouse right now, it's not doing anything. Because what we haven't done is defined what keys and what uh, you know physical movements of the mouse and the keyboard are going to do software side. If we reopen the content drawer and uh, we type in character, Sorry, let's go back, let's go to the voxel content folder and then start typing character. If you look for the cubic destruction first person character and click on that, we'll see the blueprints of the first person character. Now down in the compiler results, we see we have several events here that, um, several errors, and they're all regarding input access or input action. And this is, basically what keys are triggering these events. Because if we look at the blueprints, we can see we have all these warnings where inputs access move forward warning because nothing has been assigned to that to tell this to move forward, move back, to jump, that sort of thing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to edit, project settings. Once you do that, on the left here, we're going to select Input. And this is where we're going to control all of our keys that do things or trigger software side things in our game. So first, we'll start off by creating some action mappings. So we'll hit the plus sign and open up this dropdown. And we're going to create a new action called Fire, F-I-R-E. Make sure the F is capital. Uh, it's important that all of these are typed exactly as uh, they're put in here because they tie into the action maps on the blueprint. If they're typed differently, then it's not going to see those. Once we do that, we hit the plus sign, and this is where we can add keybinds. So for, <clears throat> for now, just for PC, I'm going to add keyboard. Oh, sorry, for fire, I'm going to add mouse and do the left mouse button. So when you click the left mouse button, it'll trigger the fire event. So we're gonna go up and we're gonna add another one. And this one is gonna be called jump. This is gonna be the space bar on the keyboard. All right, so after that, we're gonna go down to axis mappings. And the difference with an axis versus an action, an action is a one-time do. And an axis is a variation of inputs depending on, um, you know, example with the mouse, how far left or right it has moved. So our first axis we're going to create is move forward. There's no space in there and move the M and the F are both capital. And so let's use the uh, typical WASD format, so let's do W, and let's create another key here, and this is going to be the S. What we're gonna do on the scale here 
is we're going to leave the W as 1 and we're going to make the S negative 1. So basically as we hit W, it's going to increase the scale and S is going to decrease it. So let's go ahead and add another axis mapping and let's do move right. And we're going to add the W key. And then we're also going to add the S key. Now with that, we are going to make the S key a scale of negative one. So W is going to increase the scale and S is going to decrease it. So let's go ahead and add another axis. We're going to call this one turn. And we're going to tie this to the mouse X position. These specific variables are associated with the voxel plugin. Uh, and that's why we're adding these in particular. If you were starting a great game completely from scratch, scratch without using the voxel plugin, you could define these as you wish. So let's continue on and do the look up. And this is going to be our mouse Y axis. What we'll another one? And this is going to be the turn rate. And we're going to tie this to uh, our keyboard left and our keyboard right. Our keyboard right. And uh, we're going to make the scale of left negative one. All right, miss it. Let's go back in our uh, lookup. Mouse Y should also be negative one. If you forget to change this, when you go ahead and play the game, you're going to notice it, it has an inverted mouse. And when you move your mouse up, it'll look down rather than the uh, typical. All right. So let's go ahead and oops, let's add another axis mapping. And this one is going to be look up rate. Now, this is not used uh, with a keyboard mouse interface on a computer. However, we will continue getting an error in the compiler unless we assign it to something. So typically, we assign this to the gamepad right thumbstick Y. Um, we'll just assign it so we don't get the error anymore. Uh, and if you ever develop a, uh, a console game, then that'll benefit you. Uh, later on in the future, you could always assign additional mappings. So example, you could uh, do a game pad and then assign different buttons if you were to release this on a console or some other device. Once we've set those up, you can go back to your first person character and we will recompile this. If you've done it correctly, you should have no compiling errors down here and all the warnings have gone away on each of these events. So let's save that. And um, let's go back to our cubic destruction world. Let's go ahead and hit play. Once we do so, you can see now I can move around the world. I can move uh, backwards uh, and turn. However, I do see an issue. When I move forward and backwards, it's moving right and back. And uh, my A and D aren't working. So let's see what I did wrong here. Ah, right here. So um, move forward, I did W and S. And move right, I did W and S. And that's a mistake. Move right is supposed to be A and D. And then uh, A is going to be the scale of negative 1. And D is going to be positive 1. Right. 
So that looks a bit better. Um, let's go back and let's try that again. So as we do that, I'm moving right and left or backwards, right and left. Okay, it seems that the controls are much better now. Uh, so I'm assuming that everything is set up properly. Now, when we click our left mouse button, we're able to fire the gun. And if we, as an example map of how this cubic destruction works in Voxel, we can use this fire at the building. And when we do so, blocks will fall off from that trunk and create some destruction in the building. Here, so we can see the blocks. Same thing is true with the ground. And notice the blocks that fall off of that are the material of the ground. So we're identifying which materials are being destroyed in this one. We have gray and orange materials. Now, the way the plugin is pre configured, those blocks have a, um, a lifespan. And after a certain amount of time, they disappear. So if we watch these, uh, they'll begin to disappear. That's maybe something we can change in the future game or depending on the type of game you want to make, change those settings depending on however you want it to be. Uh, this could go many different directions. Um, but in our future game, I think we might keep those blocks and be able to collect them in order to give us uh, the resources that um, are destroyed. Basics and you can go around and play with this. You can start building a tunnel through the earth and uh, just continue like that. Um, but yeah, this is the basics and getting the input set up. And um, yeah, this gives a lot of opportunity to do anything. Anyways, uh, thanks for joining me and uh, look forward to seeing you in the next video.